in this video I'm going to show a demo of how the transform curve slide and surface slide deformers work. The idea behind all three is that we can fit multiple attributes into one deformer and it will make deformation in multiple directions in one go. For instance, we could split an eyebrow into mul multiple subregions such as inner and outer brow and both would move with the same deformer but with different deformation intensities which would be controlled by different controls. This way we can avoid having a lot of deformers for every single subregion, which speeds up calculation since we are gathering and applying all the data inside one deformer. The region of deformation is masked with a falloff attribute that we create and fit into the deformer. Let's start with the transform deform first. This one is very similar to the transform SOP with the added option of having multiple attributes or controls and a falloff attribute. We are first going to create our falloff mask and usually this falloff mask would be painted using attribute paint, but for the sake of simplicity of this demonstration, I'm just going to use distance along geometry SOP, which is very easy and quick to set up. So a starting point would be uh, corner of the mouth and the output mask will be our attribute so I'm gonna name it corner fall off and I'm gonna set the radius and remap curve something like this for a starting point So now this is our attribute mask for deformation. Next, let's create the transform deform sub. And let's play the guide. This is where the pivot of the transformation uh, is. And we're gonna place it in the, in the corner of the mouth. And I'm gonna rotate it so when it will be transforming in the x-axis it will go like in this direction and when it's forming z it will go outwards like this. Now let's add some attribu attributes. We created just one control attribute so let's add just one. And we set the corner fall off and Notice that nothing changes when you're changing the form value because we must first tell what will happen and we want to transform it in X. So so this, this is basically applying the transformation that we define here. Uh, usually control parameter will be connected to this deform value but there's also an alternative way to using this node and that is by setting deform value to 1 and then connecting uh, control parameter to different rotates and, and translates. It's up to you how you want to drive that transformation. Now, Let's say we want to add another control attribute to drive the center of the mouth, for instance. So we'll create another um, distance along geometry node. And select starting points. Output mask will be cent center, fall off. I'm gonna change the radius a bit. Maybe something like this. 
Now in the transform the forms up, I'm gonna add another attribute. This time it's gonna be center fall off. And if I set the transformation next to be back to 0.1, we can see that this one is deforming the center of the mouth. Well, this one is deforming the corner. So right now we are transforming the mouth in a straight line. And in this case, for instance, for the mouth, it would be better if it was transforming in a curved line. So when the mouth goes here, it would rather transform or slide in, in a curved line. And this is where the curved slide deform comes in. Now, curve slide deform has two options. Either we use a predefined curve that we built here, or use the uh, custom curve that we built before and plug it into the second input of the curve slide deform. For this example, we're going to use the curve shape editor we have here. And here we have some options that are basically telling where and what kind of shape the curve uh, that we're going to use as a slide deform curve will be. So first I'm going to connect the input from our and use the same follow-up attributes. Now this is our curve. I'm just going to translate it a bit further. Something like this. I'm going to scale it a bit. So I'm going to put it back more. And I'm going to use more cross segments to be smoother. Maybe something like this for a start. There. Now let's go into the form tab. And for now, we just want to transform it along the curve. So I'm going to disable use v and here. And I'm going to add two attributes that we have already created. The corner fall off and the center fall off. And now let's see what kind of deformation we get. So the center and the corner. So here you can see how we can use the same parameters and masks and use different deformers uh, depending on what we need. And of course, we can then tweak these deformers here and change the region uh, of our deformation. Now, let's say we also want to move and deform the geometry in the normal direction of the curve to go to point outwards. So we're going to use the VN and your option. And we're going to start by using the same attribute to move along the VN and direction as for the U direction. So the same deform attribute will be used. And if I move in the end direction, we see that we are going up and down instead of in and out. And this is just because the way the normal normals are facing for the curve. So I'm going to use the twist normals parameter and twist it 90 degrees. So now we have the in and out movement for the normal direction. V direction is perpendicular to U and N. So this will be up and down. 
So we have u for along the curve, v for up and down, and n normal for in and out deformation. Sometimes we don't want to affect our geometry the same way when moving in different directions, and this is why you have an option to use different attributes for different directions. So I will want to have a different mask for uh, corner in the end direction than what we have for U direction. And I'm going to just copy corner fall off attribute and name it corner fall off N. And let's say I want a little lower radius and a different fall off. And right now for the corner we have the same mask and here oops, I'm gonna just use corner fall of n. So notice that we are basically saying use this kind of mask for the end deformation and use that kind of mask for the U direction deformation. So this way we can have inside one deformer uh, different values and different attributes for moving in different directions. Now notice that apart from deformation in U direction, the deformation in V direction is in a straight line. And maybe we want to deform uh, in the curved way in V direction the same way as we did in U direction. And this is where the surface slide deform comes in. Now, surface slide uses a surface instead of a curve for defining how the points will slide and move. And this gives us an option to more finely define how the points will deform. So first, let's create a surface slide deform and connect it to the fall off. And as you can see here in the green shape tab, we have a lot of options to define uh, our underlying shape. So we can do the same as with, uh, we did with the curve slide deform and shape our surface. Or we can create our own and connect it to the second input. For this example, we'll just create our own uh, surface. So first, I'm going to create a grid and size it down a bit and orient it something like this. We also need UVs, so UV project. And we need normals. Okay. Now we connect it to the second input. And we can start editing our surface. So we want to create some curvature on our surface. And just for this example, I'm going to just move a bit out and create sort of soft, soften the effect towards the edges. Turn on mirror. Maybe something like this. And I'm also gonna move this bottom part inside to better follow the curvature of the face.
maybe something like this. And I'm going to subdivide it once. Uh, because this will give a more finer deformation. It also slows down the deformer, deformer a bit, so you have to be careful when using subdivision on the underlying surface, but I think this will be fine. Now let's use the same attributes for the surface light deform that we used in the curve slide and the transform deform. So the corner fall off and the uh, center fall off. And as you can see, we are following the curvature of the underlying surface in all directions. And now if we want to move points also in the normal direction, we can just use the normal direction and use the attributes we already have. And right now, you see it's not moving outwards uh, in the normal direction of the surface. This is because we have to add normals to points. Let's try again. Now I see it works as expected. And this is how transform, curve and surface light deformers work.